Okay, I, I want to go back to uh, karma, which is, you know, it's a hard Western concept. The best thing we can do in the West with karma is uh, reap, you know, reaping what you sow, seed and fruit. And a lot of times it gets messed up because we get into Newton's law for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. And this is a lie. Okay, especially on the earth plane. There are crooks and evil people who absolutely make money, have uh, hoard resources, and mistreat other people here. That there are good people who get bad things happen to them, and there are evil people that have good things happen to them. Apparently, that's because we're doing 70 years and out, and we're not looking at this thing as an evolving structure. We don't understand what a spiritual seed is and a spiritual fruit. We don't see the infection in a person's spirit, their mind. Their body. You know, there are so many people uh, that come to me and they say, you know, uh, you're a psychologist, you're a counselor, why can't we heal the world? Well, number one, let me explain something to you. People generally come to me out of choice. That means that if you are an evil, destructive being, you beat your wife and kids and you can keep them, them all hoarded in the house and shut them up, you ain't going to get no therapy. You don't want no therapy. The ones that would be sit up there screaming about therapy would be the ones hitting in the house. <laughs> okay? So let's not even go there. No one is going to change their karma. No one is going to change their shadow unless they change it by choice. The rest of it is pain is the best teacher. A lot of people don't like that. They think pleasure is a teacher. Pleasure ain't no teacher. Ple pleasure is an addictor. It just makes you want to have more. You don't even have to understand how it happened. You think that you think I'm lying? What do you think about these laboratory rats and these pigeons and every damn thing? And they go around and touch a certain button. And here comes a treat. A flipper jumps up in the sky and all of a sudden here's two fish. Well, he's going to start jumping up in the sky a little bit more often. See, you don't even have to know where the pleasure came from, why it happened. That's why when a person's being seduced, when they're being set up, when they're being trapped, they think it's heaven. And all a person has to do in order to trap you is to study your habit patterns. You just have to know a person's desires and fears. Um, the Chinese, one of their tortures, and you got to think about what was the mentality for them to create stuff like this. As they said, they call it the water torture. They put you down and they take a drop of water. And I mean, the first day that they did this, they held somebody down in a solid place and they just dropped a drop of water on their forehead. And they say, well, what the hell is this? You know, this ain't bad. I mean, this ain't bamboo under the fingernails. But that drop of water would say, bink, bink, bink. And they started dragging these people out to that torture cell. And they started screaming, not the water. <laughs> okay? See, there is more to it than meets the eye. You have to look past the wall. What's going on here? Okay? Now, if your ego won't release... I have it pattern then you're going to suffer one way or another if you don't get that thing so that's what you do when you sit down and you get quiet you say am I suffering now is it my body that is holding on to the habit pattern is it my emotions is it my mind is it my spirit and you got to be honest with yourself once you say I'm honest then you say can I release it now you don't have to worry about the damn body because the body is going to absolutely take instructions. And it got to feel good. Once you find out you got a bad knee, guess what? For the rest of your life, if that knee ain't corrected in some kind of surgery or whatever, it's going to be bad. So what? You can live with it. Okay? So a lot of the body stuff is live with it. Okay? Emotion. Emotion follows where that mind and that spirit goes. Because it's like a channel. You got to change that channel. It's hard too. Especially when you just don't know where the hell you're going. You can end up someplace you don't want to be. So go back to karma. What is this concept? It is intent. Now, there is mental intent where people have these bubble thoughts and shit. That's karma. There's seeds and thoughts and they set up structures. And there is action intent and you absolutely use your five senses the six is the mind and the bot you know you do something you absolutely put something in motion now here's a new concept i'm going to tell you 
that in this moment, you are where you're supposed to be in this universe. This moment, there's the karma. Now, the seed structures, like we sit back and say, well, I'm just shocked. You know, they had an earthquake out in California and uh, there were about 10 people that were in the middle of it and they didn't die. See what I'm saying here? That's statistics. See, and you can play your life on statistics and you could, you, that doesn't have anything to do with what's going to happen to you. But nine times out of 10, if you don't know what's going to happen, why in the hell would you go into a damn danger zone? You know, saying I may be one of those 10. Okay, so, I mean, that's called wisdom and guidance. And after you've done your best and you say, then whatever's going to happen, then I can open up to it. Okay, now, so a person can have negative intentions for you, but they don't do anything against you. But they still will be bound by those intentions. Okay, now, how do I know this? Everything you want, expect think sets up a heaven and hell structure that's right now they ain't got nothing to do with you see this is what people get scared about voodoo they say well my goodness you know they named this dial bill and they, they walk, walk up to me bill i hate you and they take a long needle and stick it into this dial this is you bill stick it in there now i'm supposed to scream and then i don't and i laugh and they say you ain't following the rules you're not following the rules now guess what Suppose that I didn't like them and I went in to Papa, Papa John's place and I bought a dial from him and I had it, Papa John stick a needle in there. And, and then I waited for something bad to happen to them and I say, thanks, Papa John. Well, when they bring that dial to me, because I did, I believed in the structure, I felt it was fulfilled. When they bring that dial to me and they say, I, I say, well, wait a minute, before you stick that needle in there, where'd you get this needle? Where'd you get this dial from? Papa John's, would you pay for it? I got the special special. Damn, that was better than the one I got. Well, when they stick that needle in there, I'm going to scream. Because I believe in that structure. I have adopted Papa John as my universal adjuster. And if someone can pay more and get a better spell, then I am slave to it. And there's your answer to why people are bound by the cords of their structures. They won't walk through that wall. Okay. And they've trapped elephants, rhinoceros, bears, every creature that's ever walked the planet of Earth with superior strength because they studied their habit patterns, which is another way of talking about expectations and desires. Okay? So, there's an energy that goes on here. For instance, they were, somebody was telling me about how they train a young elephant. They tie their little elephant's one of their foot up to a stake. Well, you know that a young elephant is not that strong. But every time the elephant tries to pull away from that stake, guess what? It's restrained. Then they say when they get in the circus later on and they can tear the whole tent down and everything else, they still got that chain. But they don't even try to break it because they've been conditioned from a young elephant that they will be restrained. And it's the same thing when you say, I'll never find love. Because every time I've tried to find love, I've been restrained. Or well, nothing good's going to happen. Because every time I try to find good, nothing good's happened. I'm telling you, you're that elephant. Now, get, don't get me wrong. I'm telling you that if you have absolutely put loving energy out there, which you haven't. But if you've actually put loving energy out there and these idiots on this plane say, that ain't love. I don't want it. Then I would tell you the following. You are in a life where that challenge is manifesting in that energy at this moment. Now, there's your wall. There's your structure. But you're not sustaining yourself off of giving. You are trying to find a packet for exchange. You're saying, I'm doing all the right things and I'm not getting it back. That ain't no giving level. And that ain't spiritual. When you get to the spiritual level, you will say, well, if I go around a bunch of headhunters and they tell me I'm dinner, don't get hurt. It's nothing personal. That's what they do. Okay? If you go around a bunch of people that are into, you know, sex and not dealing with spiritual stuff, and they say, hey, can I have sex with you tonight? Don't get insulted. That's what they do. See, I say make a probe on where life is. Once you make that probe, then you say, are my expectations appropriate for what this season is around here? 
Okay? Now, what I'm telling you is you got a crisis in creativity. Because if the things you want to do are not in season, then damn it, find a few other damn things to do that are in season. And put those other ones on the back burner. See, because it's not meant for you not to live. See, the whole cannot take out the part. And the part can't rule the whole. You are an integral part of the universe. See, it works both ways. These are things to think about.